Quotation marks. Now, quotation marks get really confusing, don't they? In American English, which is what we're going to be using in this class, periods and commas inside single or double quotation marks. That is, they go inside. Other punctuation like uh, question marks and explanation marks, they go inside when they're part of the quotation, or they may go outside if they're not part of the quotation. If you have a, if you're writing something and it's supposed to be ironic or funny or slang or some kind of new word, you can use quotation marks. I think often people know about this. First time the word is used inside of your text, if it's a special word or a new word or a technical word, you may also use quotation marks. So I think very often uh, we think of this as when you're giving a special word, so you say something like the quotation marks, right? The quotation marks. We often do this in English, right? Quotation marks. So you may say something like the large sample, the large sample. And what does that mean? I think everybody understands that means I'm saying it's large, but maybe it's not really large, right? Uh, last week, did you study very hard, hard? Did you study a long time? And you say, yes, professor, I studied a long time. What do you mean? Ten minutes is a long time? Okay, so these kinds of quotes are ironic. Ironic. That is, they're saying something that is maybe a little bit funny or not true, or it may be using a word in a special way. You can do this in your writing, but you need to be very, very careful and try to avoid it as much as possible. If you have a really special word, a special word or a special phrase, you can use quotation marks the first time it's in your research paper or in your thesis. But after the first time, you do not use quotation marks anymore, just the first time. So for example, you may say something like this, something, something, blah, 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 considered normal behavior, normal. And so what we're saying is that what does normal mean? It may have a special meaning inside of our research. Here we have another example. Blah, blah, blah. The good outcome variable. The good outcome variable, no quotation marks after the initial usage. So here, the first time we use it, we do this. Why did we do this? Because we gave the variable a special name. What is the name of the variable? We gave the name of the variable good outcome good outcome. What does good outcome mean? Good outcome means it's equal to this variable. That's the name we gave it. Why did we give it that name? Well, because we thought that means something. But does it really mean good outcome? No, it just means that I gave a name to this variable. So in statistical analysis, we may often use things like uh, factor analysis, where we have many variables and we we factor them down to a smaller number of variables where we combine variables together. And we have to give it a special name. So what name do we give it? In this case, we gave it the name good outcome. But do we really mean good outcome? No. So we use quotation marks. It's just a name. Do we use the quotation marks every time this variable name is in our paper? No. In our thesis, we only use it one time, the first time. After that, how do we write it? We just write good outcome with no quotation marks. That's a little bit confusing. And that confusing means it's probably not a good thing to do. But people love to do it. And my advice is look very carefully at your writing and think do you really need it? And are you doing it more than once? Here's an example considered normal behavior. In this example, we have single quotations, but actually you should be using double quotations. So in the APA guidelines, double quotations is correct, not single. Here's another incorrect example. The good outcome variable, the good outcome variable. Here we have it twice in our sentence or multiple sentences. And the first time we can do it, but the second time, no. You cannot do this the second time because you already did it the first time. That is enough. This leads me on to this idea of air quotes. 
air quotes is very easy for me to demonstrate to you by just using this quotes, right? So we say things like the good variable, right? Or I said, study hard. I studied hard. See my fingers up in the air? And that's why we call them air quotes. They're just in the air. So it's easy to use these air quotes because we're always trying to say, well, maybe this word is special. Maybe this word means something else. Maybe it sounds big, but actually I mean small. Maybe I say I study hard, but actually I mean I was lazy. So when you use it this way, these are called air quotes. The best thing in your research writing is don't do it. Try not to use these quotes or try to use it very, very little. Few and far in between, I think. Here's a good example. Respondents reported working hard five days a week. In this example, I'm writing my paper and I'm telling you what my sample respondents wrote. They answered a question and the, in the question it says, did you work uh, hard? Did you work not hard? Did you work a little bit hard? Did you work very hard? And I'm telling you that they said they work hard. I'm using quotation marks because I'm trying to tell you that this is a idea. I don't know that hard means 10 hours or 50 hours or 30 hours, but they said hard. So I do this hard. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm being ironic? I'm saying hard. Ah, uh, it wasn't really hard. Actually, they're lazy. They didn't work hard. Or do I really mean hard as a special meaning? Oh, it's so confusing. So the best thing is you just skip it and you don't do that. Just say that they responded. They worked hard. That's what they said. Here's another example. We administered the new survey after respondents completed the first survey. Oh boy, you see? So it gets very confusing. What does all of this mean? I understand that you're trying to say survey has a special meaning. Respondents, there may be different kinds of respondents or they're not really always respondents. First survey, maybe it wasn't the first survey, maybe there was a preliminary survey, but I'm calling this the first survey, so I need to use quotation marks. Oh my goodness. It all gets so confusing, so we just want to cut all of these air quotes. No, 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 don't use them. Horrible, confusing. The survey includes 15 open-ended questions of consumer orientation. Are you getting the idea? It's easy to do, and I understand why somebody would want to do it, because you're saying these words are special, but it's very confusing. We measure pH levels twice an hour with the pH level auto sampler. So this is an example of a special piece of equipment maybe, or a special name. So maybe you build a piece of equipment and you give it a special name. And the name of this piece of equipment is the pH level auto sampler. Oh, that sounds very interesting, but putting those quotation marks there, very troublesome because they're air quotes. Just give it a name, maybe use it one time, or best is avoid using it at all would be my advice. Just totally avoid it. No air quotes. Okay, let's look at quotation marks in general. That's very confusing. Not air quotes, but just quotation marks. You can use quotation marks for title of an article or a chapter that's inside of a journal, a periodical, or a book. So here's an example. Roger's article, Epistemological, epistemological Debates, Feminist Voices, Science, Social Values, and the Study of Women. Something, something, something you wrote. So this is an example of, I want to talk about this author's paper. This author's paper is not a book. Maybe it's a chapter in a book or it is a article inside of a journal. The name begins here and goes all the way to here and you put that name in quotations. If you quote something, for example, exactly you want to write what you told your respondents in a survey to do, for example, you can quote that. The first fill-in item was, 
could be expected to something something. So here I am quoting exactly what the instructions said, exactly what we told them to do. If you have very long text, that is, you're writing a lot, and later we're going to look at the exact number, I think more than 40 words, then you don't use quotation, you use a block uh, quotation. So we're going to cover that in a second, but when you're writing, if you have a quotation and you write, 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 and you write so much and you're quoting somebody and he's writing so much, writing so much, writing so much, writing so much, and at the end you have a quotation here, that becomes so long that is a special case and we're going to call that a black, a block quotation or a block format. We'll look at that in a minute. Do not use double quotations for these kinds of cases. Anchors of scales, so for example, if you're talking about a survey that you gave your respondents, you may say something like, respondents indicated very much agree to very much disagree. So here, very much agree and very much disagree. A lot of people would want to put quotation marks there and that would be wrong. You would not do that, that's wrong. At the same time, maybe we're writing the sentence and we just go ahead and write this. But look, if I write this, respondents indicated very much agree, it's hard for the reader to know, is this part of the sentence or is this the word, the phrase, are these the words that were on the survey? So the better way to do this is right here, italicize. That is, the words are at that angle, right? Inside Microsoft Word, you can italicize. So this is correct and this is not correct. We rank the items on a scale ranging from one all of the time to five never. And again, how do we do this here? Right here, italicize and right here, italicize. So this is wrong. We need to put it at an angle and put it at the angle and that way we know that that's exactly what was inside of the survey. You can use quotation marks on letters, words, phrases, or sentences as linguistic examples and again you want to italicize. So for example here, he clarified the distinction between farther and further. So this is exactly what the person said. So we kind of think, hey, we should use quotation marks we should use quotation marks. But in reality, it gets a little bit confusing when you do that. So it would be better to go ahead and italicize. Why? Because it's just a word or a phrase or a linguistic example. So here we use this italicize, that is, write the letters at that angle. If you're introducing a technical term or a special kind of word, then you can italicize it also. So for example, the term zero base budgeting appeared frequently in the speech. So this is a special term. And earlier we had said special terms or special words. You can use the, oops. Cut. Cut. We said that you could use the quotation marks around a special word or phrase, but we also said that air quotes, you should try to avoid them. So the better approach to this would be to use the italics. That is, write it at an angle like that, the italics. Here's another example. Let me clear this board. She compared it with meta-analysis, which is described in the next section. So here the special word is meta-analysis, a technical word. How do we describe a technical word? 
We could use the quotation marks, but we want to avoid air quotes, so you use the italics. And again, just use the italics for the first time would be the best way to do that. You don't want to be doing it all the time. Don't use quotation marks to make something sound ironic or different, as I talked about. So here, the teacher rewarded the class with tokens. And here, the teacher rewarded. And here, we're doing this thing again, right? We're doing this rewarded. Right? That's air quotes, and it's very confusing. Don't do it. How do we use single and double quotation marks differently? Double quotation marks include quotations, while single quotation marks are within double quotation marks. So here's an example. Millet 1993 found that the placebo effect, which has been verified in previous studies, disappeared when only the first group's behaviors were studied in this manner. Please look a little bit closely here because it's going to be a little bit confusing, I think. Here we have the researcher, and this is what I wrote. This is my writing. And then beginning here is a quotation mark all the way to here. This is what that researcher wrote. He wrote all of this. He wrote this. But when he wrote it, inside of his sentence, this phrase here, placebo effect, he wrote that with two commas because it was a technical term, a technical phrase. So I am quoting what he wrote and then he used quotations inside of his writing. So this is a quotation inside a quotation. So if you have a quotation inside a quotation like this, then you should use the single quotes, not the double. Even though he wrote it as double. I'm quoting him. I need to change his double to be single. Is that confusing? Here's an example of how it would be wrong. So in this example, we begin the quotation. This is beginning what he said, ending what he said. He quoted this as placebo effect. He used quotation. But look at that. Two double and two double inside. You cannot do that. As I mentioned earlier, if you're writing a very long quotation that is longer than 40 words, you should use a block quotation. So how do you write a block quotation? A block quotation is a special case. Maybe I want to copy what Malay wrote in 1993. He wrote this. Look at all he wrote. It's so long. How can I possibly uh, write all of that? Well, you can. It's going to be long, but you don't want to write it in a long, long sentence or two sentences or three sentences because the reader is going to get confused because here, look, we have a period here and a capital letter. And then what do we do? Do we begin with a quotation here and do we end the quotation here and then begin another quotation? Or do we put a quotation at the end and at the beginning? How do we handle that? Well, there is a special way to do that, and that is the block quotation. The way the block quotation works is, first you write the introduction, then you use a colon, and then you write the whole quotation, no quotation marks, only this will be indented, and this will be indented on this side. That is, the space to the edge of the paper will be bigger. So let me draw this here. So maybe our paper size is like this, and then you're writing your sentences like this, and then here you say, and Malay found the following. You have a colon, and then here you write the long quotation. And you see this space here, and you see this space here. So this is called a block quotation, a block quotation. That is, you make the margins bigger and you put it into a block. And a little bit of space before and a little bit of space after. And then I can see this is all of what Malay 
quote, the quote of his. This is what you copied from his text. It does not have a quotation at the beginning. It does not have a quotation at the end. It doesn't need to because I can see it's one long quote. Now look at this. Because I'm using this block quotation, look at that. Inside, I copied exactly what he wrote, including the double quotation marks. I did not change them to single. Why? Because I am not using the beginning and ending quotation marks. I am using a block quotation. That is, I'm copying exactly what he wrote, very long, with no quotation marks. So here would be an example of it's wrong. Quotation marks at the beginning, quotation mark at the end, and that is just way too long to do that. More than 40 words, you should avoid that.